Hey everybody, it's Stephen from Asian Boss. Today, April 16th, marks the five-year anniversary of the Sewol Ferry disaster in Korea, where a ferry en route from Incheon to Jeju sank, killing 304 people. Most of them were high school students. We've been asked to cover this issue in depth, but given the complexity involved in telling the story, and out of our respect, we thought it'd be more appropriate to defer to someone who's more qualified to tell the story. Neil George is a talented British filmmaker who spent three years covering every aspect of the Sewol Ferry disaster. He's interviewed everyone from the survivors to victims' family and politicians, you name it. Neil was kind enough to let us share a 38-minute version of his full documentary. So if you're looking for the definitive guide on what really happened, this is Crossroads. After some time, apartment block after apartment block. And then slowly, a sense of civilization. As I continued and the sun began to set, the landscape around me changed. The mountains turned to high-rise buildings, and the sky became filled with flashing neon lights. When I first came to Korea in 2005, it was still a developing nation. I didn't really know much about the country I have grown so fond of. And when I talk to other foreigners about Korea, many of them think only about the North, a country that often dominates the world's headlines. The South has very much stayed under this radar, and in doing so has allowed itself to grow into this little powerhouse with global brands that surround us every day of our lives. But when we start to look a little deeper, we start to see a different kind of story. Family members wait desperately for answers on shore. So far, no survivors pulled from inside the ferry. A year has passed since the tragic Seolho ferry accident, and for many, especially the families of the victims, it's been an agonizing 12 months. Korea is marking the second anniversary of the Seolho ferry sinking on this Saturday. More than The government will died. reinforce the safety system across society and do its utmost to... Park Geun his approval safety. rating has plummeted to an all-time low. The South Korean president embroiled in a scandal that has thousands of protesters... The trial of Chesun Shil will begin here in Seoul. South and Korean president just... Park Geun-hye was impeached by parliament and stripped of her powers pending a constitutional... After repeated delays to lift the sunken Seoul ferry, the latest report suggests Another the arrest set. of Samsung chief Lee Jae-yong is being met with mixed reactions in South Korea. Korea's independent counsel team has indicted E for funneling roughly 37 million U.S. dollars. Historic week, historic day. Call it a watershed moment for South Korea and its democracy. The Supreme Court unanimously willing to chase President Park Geun-hye from power.
한국으로 가는 길엔 오로지 일에 대한 생각만 했던 것 같아요. 휴대폰 확인하고 사진을 찍어 보내면서 저는 한국 한켠에 앉아서 승선을 기다리고 있었습니다. 낮게 깔린 바다 안개와 우중충한 분위기 속에서 배 마지막으로 승선하면서 뭔가 불길한 기운이 사로잡혔었습니다. 출항을 기다리는 동안 저는 가판에 올라 주변을 둘러보았고 많은 학생들이 뛰어놀고 있었고 학생들의 웃음소리가 배 안에 가득 메웠습니다. 식당에 앉아 일정을 확인하고는 산책을 위해 걸음을 옮기던 순간 배가 흔들렸습니다. 배는 갑자기 한쪽으로 기울기 시작했고 안내방송이 시작되었습니다. 작은 객실에 앉아 구조를 기다리는 동안 숨이 턱하고 막혔습니다. 도대체 무슨 일이 벌어지는 건지. 배는 이내 40도 정도 기울어진 것 같고 더 이상 바로 설 수조차도 없었습니다. 먼 곳에서 헬기 소리가 들렸지만 탈출하는 방송은 전혀 나오지 않았고 밖으로 나와보니 헬기가 상공에 떠 있었는데 왜 탈출하는 방송은 없는지 배 안으로 돌아갔을 땐 아무도 없었습니다. 배는 이미 80도가량 기울어져 한 발짝 움직이기도 쉽지 않았습니다. 구명조끼를 입지 않은 학생이 보였어요. 그는 구명조끼가 부족해서 친구한테 자신의 구명조끼를 벗어줬다고 했습니다. 지금도 전그 학생에게 조끼를 벗어주지 못한 것에 대한 죄책감이 듭니다. 한순간에 배는 90도 이상 기울었고 배 안으로도 물이 밀려오기 시작했습니다. 바닷물에 쓸려 나오는 아이를 간신히 잡아서 머리 위로 들어올려 아이 좀 잡아달라고 소리친 것이 제 마지막 기억입니다. 정신을 차리고 기억나는 것은 고깃배 선장님이 밧줄을 던져준 것입니다. 저는 바다로 뛰어들었고 그 밧줄을 잡으려 헤엄쳤습니다. 제 이름은 김성목입니다. 저는 그날 세월호를 탔었고 살아남았습니다. 2014, and possibly for the first time in Korean history, the citizens watched images broadcast live on television of the sinking of the Sewol ferry and the effective murder of these young high school students and other passengers on board, all due to the inaction of the government. This tragic disaster was to shape Korean society as question after question was raised about how and why this happened in the first place. 
desperation is settling in. As we have seen throughout Korean history, the ones in power once again failed to take responsibility. Once again, we saw the people taking to the streets in protest and support of disabled victims' families. The struggles and battles disabled families endured over the next three years were to shape Korean society for the future. The endless fighting in order to raise the ship, their search for the truth and for a transparent government will now go down in Korean history as one of its most defining moments. In a country that has become world-renowned for its fast development at any cost, it soon became known for the way the people fight for their democratic rights. And most importantly, the way they brought down the president. Born out of Gwangju, 610 uprising, and the tragic Sewol disaster, this era of fresh, young activists has now coined a new name. The Sewol Generation. Talking about the Sewol Generation indicates something significant. Earlier generations would have been unhappy about, you know, uh, accidents, disasters, bad safety record. This generation is saying, no, we want things to be better now. The Sewol movement is so broad it's uh, affected even small towns and villages, and rightly so, because people saw that the central government could not save the lives of innocent children. And this hierarchy of Confucianism where the captain and his elderly crew saved themselves rather than worry about the young kids that were under their care is just an atrocious comment on the failure of Confucian, of hierarchy, of authoritarianism. So that being questioned is one of the great breakthroughs that we see. What we have witnessed is this new, fresh generation trying to change things for the better. A youth that has spent many hours in front of their phones and computer screens have now been awoken by the tragic event that killed their brothers and sisters. They have now stepped away from their six-inch safe spaces and have made a voice for themselves, shouting out for change. Once they believed there was no light at the end of the tunnel, but now they have realized that they are actually the light. The Sewol generation are here, and they don't intend on going anywhere. <laughs> Sewol 
사람들이 막 뛰어다니고 여기저기 나한테 말을 걸어오고 무슨 말을 해야 할지도 모르겠고 뭘 해야 할지도 몰랐어요 너무 피곤했고 쉬고 싶었지만 이동을 해야 했어요 끝날 것 같지 않은 시간들이 시작된 거죠 침대에 눕고 나니 약간 안정이 찾아오는 듯 싶다가도 너무 피곤해서 눈을 감으면 다시 그 장면들이 떠올랐어요 꿈에 계속 나타났어요 언제 끝날까 잊혀지긴 하는 걸까 내 친구들이 모두 사라졌어요 그리고 추억은 그대로지만 비어버린 교실로 돌아가야 했어요 학교 가는 길이 너무 두려웠어요 버스 정류장엔 아무도 없었고 우리는 살아남았지만 모든 것이 전과 같지 않았어요 The nation has a deep-rooted divide that we can still see today, but we can also see this new generation who are trying to change things for the better. What the Sewol generation have already achieved since that fateful day in 2014 can only be thanks to the Sewol families, who have never given up in the face of such opposition. But there is still a deep division within the country between the young and old generations. Especially, we could see this within the political divide. President Park Geun-hye on Friday apologized to the public for a second time. She explained her history with Choi Soon-sil, one of her closest friends, who was allowed to access classified documents, including presidential speeches. The president also expressed her willingness to cooperate. When the, the anti-Park protesters took to the streets in 2016, we also saw the pro-Park supporters come out in force as well. There's a generation now in their 60s, 70s who, in South Korea who come out to vote in, in great numbers. They, they sort of, I guess they see it as a duty to vote and they vote overwhelmingly for conservative uh, candidates, conservative parties. And I think that has a lot to do with the world they grew up in, you know, the, the ideology of the time they grew up in, the 50s, 60s, 70s, staunch anti-communism, uh, you know, very much a time of the developmental regime. Everything was about developing the country. Everything was about growth. Everything was about self-sacrifice. Driven from their desires to see the country develop into what they had hoped. But looking at it through their eyes, it would seem they are not getting it exactly the way they thought. We seem once again to be at another crossroads in Korean history. We headed to Seoul Station to talk with the pro-park supporters about the Sewol tragedy and also about the presidential scandal that was hitting the headlines. The Park geun approval rating has plummeted to an all-time low. The South Korean president embroiled in a scandal that has thousands of protesters calling for her resignation. Now, the other woman at the center of that controversy. Uh, 
어떤 법적인 절차가 있잖아요. 그러면 네. 법에 따라서 처리를 하면 되고 대통령께서 법에 특검도 받겠다. 모든 걸 어, 법에 준해서 검찰 조사도 받겠다 했는데 어떻게 해서 야당은 모든 걸 내놓으라고. 그러면 결국은 자기들이 정권을 빼앗겠다는 이야기밖에 안 되잖아요. The majority of people are uh, you know, manipulated by the media. She has done a lot of you know, good works to protect the country. So that's why the, the silent majority is uh, backing her up. So the, the, the people does not judge her by the mere voice of the few uh, you know, uh, protesters you know, coming out in the street. 그리고 세월호 문제는 그거는 사고였어요. 누구하고도 책임 지울 수가 없는 사고였다고요. 다 가슴 아프고. 세월호 자체는 참 마음이 아픈 일이죠. 근데 물론 정부에서 대처 방법도 조금 뭐 늦어서 문제가 생겼지만 저는 그 세월호 턱이나 이런 그런 분들이 어떤 과거에 어떤 진보 뭐 저희가 말하는 사회 종국 그런 사람들이 다 주축이 되어 이루어져 있다는 그 자체가 너무나 우습고요. 그러니까 진실을 밝히려면 보수나 우익 사익이나 공통적으로 중립을 지킬 수 있는 사람들이 그 위원회에서 활동을 하는 게 맞지 어떻게 해서 그쪽 자익 쪽 사람들만 거기에서 위원장하고 과연 그 세월의 터기가 얼마만큼 활동을 하면서 수억 원의 뭐 연금을 받으면서 활동을 하면서 뭘 했는지 저는 그게 궁금합니다. 세월은요 나도 자식을 키우기 때문에 어린애가 죽으면 나도 마음이 안 좋아요. 그런 엄밀한 소풍에다 죽은 거 아닙니까? 그러면 그 선박회사, 저 선박회사 회장님이 책임을 져야 되는데, 박근혜, 박근혜 대통령께서 손주 갖고 자식 갖고, 응? 이런, 이런 게 인간적으로 다 물어준 거예요, 계속 우선. 그러면 이제 국가에서 다준 건데, 그거를 전부 무슨 뭐, 어? 박근혜 대 잘못했다. 아, 거기 밑에는 다 부서가 있잖아요. 1, 2 대통령이 쫓아다니는 수습을요? 수사부 장관, 수사부 장관. 뭐, 그 부서가 가서 수습을 하는 거지. 그래 박근혜 대통령 책임이죠? 세월호는요, 말 그대로 박근혜 대통령 세월호가 있다는 걸 몰랐습니다. 나도 세월호를 몰랐어요. 나도 뉴스 보고 알았습니다. 그 다음날 알았습니다. 놀러 가다가 엎어졌어요. 물론, 거기에서 그 사람들, 장사하고 배를 띄운 사람들, 이런 사람들이 이득을 취하기 위해서 구조를 저 바꾸고 할수 있어요. 그러나 대통령 책임은 아니에요. 그게 언제 바꾼 건데? 박근혜가 바꿨어요? 박근혜가 바꾼 거 아니에요. When we look at the political strongholds within South Korea, we are immediately drawn to the southeast and southwest of the country. Gyeongsan areas of Daegu and Busan generally vote in high percentages for conservatives, whereas areas such as Gwangju vote for the more progressive candidates. If we look back over the years, we can see that this political divide was not always as present as it has been. The political divide in South Korea, the, this idea of Daegu and, the, and the, the southeastern area as being a conservative stronghold, this it has been to some extent manufactured in the sense that if you go back before Park Chung-hee's period in office, actually the southeast of South Korea and particularly Daegu was a real stronghold of left-wing politics. And if you go back to the 1940s, and you go back to things like the um, autumn harvest uprising in 1946, centered around 19, uh, centered right around Daegu. So it's not always been conservative. Park Chung-hee consciously tried to turn it into a conservative stronghold. First of all, of course, by purging leftists from from the area, and then uh, and, and through campaigns of fear, campaigns of imprisonment, and so on. And so. The, the southeast of the country, that was the part of the country which he poured the resources into in South Korea's industrialization in the late 60s and 70s. You know, the, the two Gyeongsan provinces around Busan, Daegu, and places like Ulsan, that became the industrial uh, powerhouse of South Korea and still is basically today. We have seen this divide grow and grow over the decades between the younger and older generations. But one thing they do have in common is their passion and determination. We saw this throughout the protests in Seoul and all over the country when in support of or calling for the resignation of the president. 
The eight justices at Korea's Constitutional Court ruled unanimously this morning to uphold the impeachment of President Park, making her the first sitting Korean president to be impeached. Outside the court, pro Park protesters clashed with police. Two died, one apparently by falling from the top of the bus he'd climbed onto. For a long time, there was a narrative in South Korea, particularly on the left in South Korea, that the, the whole of the left and the, and the activist movements that South Korea had been very famous for in the 80s and 90s had been in decline, in a long-term decline. There was really not, probably not going to be recovered. Uh, the student movement was in decline. The NGO movement was in decline. Uh, the labor movement was in decline. This just shows that these things, you know, don't go necessarily in a, in a very linear way. Events happen, things come along, and suddenly a whole new uh, generation of activists is thrown into activity. Social movements represent the seeds of what's new in society. It's my understanding of Korea that demographics favor the continual uh, and wonderful uh, growth of progressive politics. The power of the people became a force, a nonviolent force that was able to change the society. And this power in the struggle against Park Gun hye bears fruit with her removal. So step by step, these movements have built a hegemony in the society. And we see only increasing power of the people in South Korea. ポスター학교로 돌아와서 창밖을 내다보면 모든 게좀 다르게 와닿았어요. 주변에 가득했던 친구들 모습들이 돌아와 보니 나와 같은 표정을 한 친구들만 남아 있었어요. 친구들을 찾아서 복도를 걸어 다녀도 교실은 텅 비어 있는 느낌이고 추억들만 스쳐 지나갔어요. 칠판을 봐도 애들 낙서나 일상적인 학창 시절의 모습이 아니고 슬픔만 채워져 있는 것 같았고 의자엔 웃음소리는 이제 없었고 떠난 친구 교복만 걸려 있었어요 어디를 돌아다녀도 추억이 떠올랐어요 
살아 있었다면 지금 어땠을까? 이런 일이 아예 없었다면 우리 삶은 많이 달랐겠지? 내 친구들의 얼굴을 절대 잊을 수 없을 거예요. 참 많은 아이들과 함께 학교를 다녔는데 이후에는 너무 조금만 남았어요. will now go down in Korean history as one of its most defining moments. But having witnessed all of this, we now must question why they still have to fight so hard for the truth. We cannot deny what we witnessed in 2016 as we watched the people stand up. They shouted for justice and we saw the change. When the president was impeached, people saw hope. But at the same time, we saw this ever-growing divide between the younger and older generations. After the years of suffering since the 1980s, we now stand at a crossroads once again, looking towards the future. Perhaps now we should again start to question how well democracy is actually functioning. We know that the only way for the truths to come out is if the people continue to fight for them. So let us all take note of what the Sable families have done and sacrificed for each one of us. This remarkable story is something that we hope when we look back on the aftermath of this tragic event in 20 years time, we will see a new chapter written into Korean history. And it is our hope that in the future, people will see this as an international phenomenon. And we will be witness to the creation of a worldwide movement that can draw great inspiration from the Sewol families and the Sewol generation. Chingo 또 너무 오랫동안 외로웠어요. 
제가 어떤 감정을 느끼는지는 잘 모르겠어요. 뭔가 살아있지만 많은 것이 없어진 느낌. 가족들과 함께인 것이 감사하고 원래 알던 친구들이나 새로 사귄 내 친구들도 다 좋아요. 정말 많은 분들이 오가며 도움을 주시고 정말 감사하게 생각하는데 과연 그것이 충분할까요? 시간이 지나면 알게 되겠죠. 하지만 한 가지 우리 모두가 기억했으면 하는 건내 친구들이 그 어린 나이에 가졌던 그 많은 꿈들과 희망들이 한순간에 싸그리 사라졌다는 거예요. 그렇지만 절대 사라지지 않을 추억들도 가지고 살겠죠. 절대 잊혀지지 않을. 친구들이 떠나기 전에 그 많던 웃음소리들 함께 즐거웠던 그 시간들 언제나 기억할 거예요 우리가 함께 보낸 시간들 언젠가 다시 만날 수 있겠죠? 시간은 계속 흘러가겠죠? 우리의 행동에 따라 미래가 바뀔 수 있다고 믿어요. 과거의 실수로부터 깨달은 바가 없다면 같은 실수가 반복될 수밖에 없을 거예요. 먼 미래에 여러분 자식의 눈을 바라봤을 때 아이들의 미래를 위해 쌓아온 스스로를 자랑스럽게 생각할 수 있길 바래요. 미래 세대에 희망을 주기 위해서 모두 다 함께 힘을 모으길 바래요. 우리의 배경은 모두 다르지만 우리 모두가 세월호 세대입니다. 제 친구들의 죽음이 헛되지 않게 우리 모두가 이 사회의 빛과 희망의 등불이 될수 있음을 기억하길 바래요. 우리가 모두가 원하는 그 변화를 만들어가요. 우리에게 필요한 변화를 꼭 만들어 나가요. 이제 우리 미래를 위한 새로운 역사를 써 나가야 할 때입니다.